Hello everyone, this is Sensei Starman and welcome back to Let's Play Loom. The well, last time you recall, we met the Guild of Shepherds and the Guild of Glassmakers. And we wanted to help out the Shepherds by turning their sheep green, which made us an easy target for the local dragon. Who we scared off after turning her golden horde into straw and turning ourselves into her greatest fear, which surprisingly was fire. And we have now learned the A note. And we have darkness. But luckily we have a spell for that. walking ahead of us. It might help to point at something f it, m it might help to point at something first. Okay, so that doesn't seem to get us anywhere. Uh, but in point of fact, we do need to find some way through there. Guess I won't be going back that way. My own reflection.
Well, no obvious way to jump over that gap. This isn't that type of game. But we can take this twisted staircase. make it into something a little bit easier to navigate. Oh, and that pissed off dragon is still trying to find us. And yep, never graveyard. With a sleeping boy here. He's fast asleep. Well, luckily we just learned a wake up charm. There? What's that? Your music woke me up. Oh, sorry. Oh, not to worry. I'm Rusty, Rusty Nailbender. I'm Bobbin Threadbare, of the Weavers. Weavers, eh? Our folk are blacksmiths. I'm supposed to be getting firewood for the master, but this plateau is being picked cleaner than a new blade. Come over here. That's us down there. The forge. That's what we call it. I've heard you weavers don't get out much. What's your business here? I've been looking for a flock of swans. Swans? No. No swans around here. Oh, say, all this talk has made me sleepy. A real pleasure, though. Oh, let me know if you find your swans. Oh. Okay, he's asleep, but... We can give ourselves a suitable disguise to go into the blacksmith city. And I'm sure nothing bad will happen because of him now looking like us. Hello, young nailbender. About time you were coming home. Stoke's been looking for you, and he ain't real happy. You better get in there right now. Well, it's about time, you lazy idiot. I sent you out four hours ago for firewood, and you bring me back one scrawny stick. If your father weren't the foreman, I'd toss you in the furnace. You're just like the use downstairs with the bishop right now. If that fire goes out and the cleric's swords don't get done... I'm sorry, I had a bit of trouble. Perhaps you'd like to offer your confessions to the bishop in person. I'd be happy to arrange it. Now give me that stick! I'm done dealing with the likes of you, Nailbender. I'll be back, and you'd better hope the furnace doesn't go out. What a mess. I can't do anything without my distaff. Well... That straw looks awfully comfortable, though. Oh, I must have a sleep draft woven into it. Imagine frightening a poor defenceless old thing like me, Cor. 
Well, I may not be much good with fire, love, but I still enjoy the taste of tender, firm, young meat. One blasted stick of wood left. Curse that lad. Ten thousand swords to forge, and the furnace is about as cold as my chances for promotion. I don't believe this. Real nice of that weaver kid. Just wait until his turn comes. I'll be waiting for him on the outside. Oh dear, that means trouble. If Elder Atropos saw his star treated so, he'd have something to say about it. You, you could be sure of that. Careful now, old bird. Let's not singe the feathers. Oh, come on. Five ounce bird cannot tarry a four pound quarter staff. Hey, that's convenient. But hey, as long as we're here. Don't learn anything useful from the fire. Not a stick left. I, I probably shouldn't go back there dressed like this. The final blade is even now in the hands of our most skilled blade shaper, Your Excellency. How's it coming there, Edgewise? I'm just putting the edge on the last sword, sir. Good to hear it! No slacking off now! Let's get it finished! Well... You share with me a historic moment, Foreman. The forging of the Ten Thousand Sword marks the end of our preparations. How much longer must I wait? The steel will ring out its final defeat, sir. Not much longer now. Very good, then. Carry on! Well, he's holding that sword up there, and we know a spell that will sharpen a blade, but we also know one that will dull it. What? What evil is this? A witch's curse has twisted the final blade. A curse, Edgewise? I think not. It would take more than a mere witch's curse to ruin my plans. You there! Could it be that this little prank is of your doing? Yes? Well then, I would be honored to have you as my guest at the cathedral. I know some other curses that may amuse you. And the dragon's still flying around. I'm getting really tired of this. Allow me to introduce myself. I am Bishop Mandible, trans-ultimate apostle of the anti-secular conclave of clerics. I know. Am I expected to kneel? Silence, you impudent punk! This is my assistant, Cobb. Charmed, I'm sure. And you require no introduction. Your cloak and staff betray your origins. But I must say I'm surprised to find you here. 
been quite a long time since any weaver bothered to leave that dreary little rock you call home. <laughs> Loom. <laughs> so provincial. I can't help but wonder what impelled you to leave it now. His Excellency asked you a question. I know. I'm ignoring it. Ah, recalcitrance. I see. Shall I fetch the uh, instruments of persuasion, Master? Please forgive my assistant his eagerness. I fear Cobb is not very worldly. He does not understand the dangerous power of a weaver. Dangerous? Your reverence, him? Quite dangerous indeed, my dear Cobb. In fact, he could burst this flimsy iron cage open with hardly a second thought. That's impossible, most exalted one. I inspect the locks personally every fortnight. Observe and learn then, for even now your prisoner plans his escape. Hmm, got an idea. Unfortunately, we can't click on the cage over there. All we can do is our very first spell. You see, Cobb? An elusive breed, these weavers. Fortunately, however, they're quite helpless without their weaving sticks. That distaff will never work for you. Oh, no, my young friend, you're quite wrong about that. Come, let me show you why. Consider the common graveyard. There, the boundary between the living and the dead is indistinct. Every graveyard like that, so... Now, imagine what might happen if this delicate boundary were to be somehow breached. Torn open, so to speak. It's not that simple. You can't just rip the pattern apart like an old rag. But it is that simple, my boy, and I can. I have only to lift this rod, and the legions of the dead will stream forth onto the plain of the living. A vast army of the dead, nourished by the shepherd's flocks, armed by the artisanship of the blacksmiths, guided by the glassmaker's spear. All under the spiritual leadership of one supreme commander, me! The final hour is now at hand. The age of the clerics is upon us. I have preparations to attend to, Cobb. Don't let this boy out of your sight. He is to touch nothing. Do you understand me? <laughs> Perfectly, Your Excellence. Lord Mandible, ruler of the universe. Mm, I do. I do like the sound of it. I'll have to change my stationery. You're not so dangerous now, then, are you? Well, maybe not, but let's see what we can do here. Keep away from that! His Eminence said not to touch anything! I wasn't gonna touch it. Just looking, Cobb, that's all. Just looking, eh? Well then, perhaps we can do a bit of a trade. How about I let you look in the sphere if... If... what? Well, the legends say that to gaze upon an uncloaked weaver brings death. Naturally, we clerics aren't given to such silly superstitions, but I'm curious. Let's answer this one once and for all, shall we? No! May we have some quiet, please? I can't even begin to invoke the dead with all that screaming. Well, he can't say he wasn't warned. Yeah, the animation here is quite different because uh, the original game, the EGA version, had all of these close-up portraits of most of the characters that you talk to. We got a 
little hint of that with the scene of the glass blower and the cleric talking and then Bobbin and the cleric talking a moment ago, but all of those got scrapped, including the close-up portrait for Cobb when you talk to him, which is weird because that portrait formed the picture of the pirate Cobb in Secret of Monkey Island. But... <laughs> She looks hungry. I think I'll stay out of her way. So yeah, nothing to do but head on out. And I see Cobb has been lax in his duty. No matter. You're just in time to witness the dawn of a new era. You don't have the slightest idea of what you're doing. The pattern is already worn and frayed. If you rip a hole in it now, the consequences will be beyond anything you can imagine. Spare me your weaver mysticism, boy. The time has come when the dead shall no longer envy the living. You've torn the pattern completely open. And with it, the eyes of the dead. Behold! I have a very bad feeling about this. Who dares disturb the peace of those who sleep? I welcome and greet you, noble spirit. I am Bishop Mandible. Transultimate Apostle of the Anti-Secular Conclave of Clerics. And whom have I the honor of summoning? I don't think I want to be part of this conversation. No one obeyed any summoning of yours, foolish mortal. I have summoned you. I am Chaos. You have merely opened the door, and I have passed through it. For this, you shall be rewarded. Join me now, as my slave. I see it has been much too long since my last visit. Well, good news is we got our staff back. I can't seem to hold on to this thing. Bad news is, uh, reality's done broke. And something let that thing out of its cage. And a roast bird. Well, that's no good. Stop! Well, we got a rip in reality. It can't be as simple as just casting clothes on it. Can it? Apparently it can. Rusty? Is that you? Y you don't look at all well. I'm not well. Actually, I'm dead. I don't... I don't know what to say. You don't have to say a thing. What do I matter? I'm just another one of the dead. Oh, Rusty, I feel terrible. And I didn't know... And that's not even the end of it. 
I'd go outside to wait for doomsday, like a good little ghost scene. But no sooner do I get settled again, but some stupid idiot shreds the universe apart and hauls us all back inside. There are a lot of very unhappy dead wandering around here, let me tell you. I know, I was there when it happened. I might have known this was all your fault. No, no it wasn't me. The bishop managed this one all on his own. Yeah, well, there's going to be hell to pay, literally. There's talk among the dead that they're going to take over the world, starting with the forge. My home, where we used to build strong things, good things. Well, sucks to be you, man, but, uh... Thanks, but no thanks, friend. It was you and your stupid stick that got me into this mess. Yeah, he won't let us leave. However, long shot. We do have a healing spell. You did it. You brought me back. It is what you wanted, isn't it? Believe me. Being alive is a lot more fun than being dead. But how did you do it? Well, healing your body was easy. You're alive because the pattern is torn and your soul was free to return to this side. Well, I must go, Bobbin. I've got to know what happened to the rest of my guild. And I must do the same. Good luck, Rusty. And be careful. Good fortune to you too, my friend. And yeah, apparently the plan for one of the sequels was going to center on Rusty trying to find the rest of the blacksmiths and having to go on his own quest to try and heal reality in the wake of everything that's going on. Shame it didn't wind up happening. It might help to point at something first. And yeah, we cannot... I'd better not wander off too far. Yep. Can't go back the way we came. But we can take this hole. And close that one up. Looks like this hole in reality goes back to where the shepherds are, and that is where we will pick things up next time. But thank you all for watching. Please like and subscribe if you haven't already. Leave us a comment if you are so inclined, and we'll continue the adventure from here next time. Take care until then.